Hey everyone, welcome. This is a short little hearing that was super confusing at first. I was a bit distracted. I'm sure I have seen this petitioner somewhere before. It's hard to forget that level of eyeliner. A quick Google search answered my question, as it always does, if only I got paid for how much I Google things. And if only I could forget 98% of the things I read. Anyway, Melissa, or Missy as she prefers to be called, is currently in court challenging the results of the Thomas County, Kentucky election from August 6th of 2024, where she ran for precinct committee woman for the city of Colby, where she lives. For reference, there's nine committee women and nine committee men for the whole entire county. She won, so I'm not exactly sure what her complaint is, and I tried reading her filing, but it is a huge tossed word salad. Lots of dressing. She filed a writ of mandamus, which is essentially asking the court to order the lower court or another entity to do something. The problem is, is she doesn't share any evidence on what the failure to act or the wrongdoing is or what she really wants done. She says she wants them to follow the law, but she doesn't show how they're not following the law. And no longer use the Dominion voting machines, I believe is what she's trying to say, although she doesn't say it very clearly. And this is where I get irritated with pro se litigants. There was recently a pro se in Michigan who appealed his life sentence for murder and won, which is amazing. This lady, however, needs to get a job, watch a few makeup tutorials. I try not to judge, but I'm pretty sure at that level, it's harmful to your eyes. A pro se PTA mom in Kansas cannot challenge the Dominion voting machine software in a similar manner of how Donald Trump's legal team did. I mean, his legal team is like massive and pro se mom is gonna do the same thing? Like, get real. No, that was not a, in any way, a political comment that was comparing the size of a legal team to a pro se mom in Kansas. Just to be clear for the record. Before I allow you to view this dumpster fire shit show, I wanted to let you know that Missy gained a little bit of notoriety um, two, two or so years ago when she actually petitioned to have the votes recounted for the abortion rights ban in Kansas, even though the bill lost by a large margin, voters rejected the bill by a 59 to 41 margin with more than 165,389 more no votes than yes votes. Still, she wanted that bill passed. So she lobbied and raised over a hundred and like $119,000, I believe, out of the $250,000 necessary to have votes recounted. She did have them recounted in several different counties, and I think she got like 40 extra votes, maybe. Yeah. Wah, wah. So she likes doing this stuff. Yes. Okay. Court of call, Melissa Levitt versus Keisa Merriman. Thomas County case number 24 CV 25 announced appearances. Your Honor, I'm Melissa Levitt, the petitioner. Okay, Ms. Levitt appears in person and pro se by Zoom. Your Honor, Andrew Holder on behalf of Defendant Merriman. All right. Ms. Levitt, uh, as you know, um, you have the right to be represented by counsel. Uh, you have filed this petition pro se. Is it still your intent to proceed today representing yourself? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. We're before the court on a motion to dismiss filed by the defendant, uh, and uh, the court granted the parties an opportunity for some subsequent uh, briefing. And in the interim, uh, Ms. Levitt filed some additional motions uh, for emergency orders, particularly related to the primary, which has already occurred. Um, and are we ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Levitt, um, you are the plaintiff, um, and it's your motions that have been filed to be dismissed. Um, I have read Mr. Holder's brief on behalf of the county clerk, uh, and I'm going to allow you to argue, um, although I would ask you not to read or repeat the arguments you've already made in writing as the court has reviewed those. Um, do you have anything additional you wish to offer in response to the uh, 
briefs and motions filed by defense? Not particularly, Your Honor. I just think that, um, you know, I've supplied the court with as much as I could evidence wise. Um, I really didn't find anything additional that I could add to, you know, go against what's already been mentioned by the defense in this matter. Okay. Ms. Levin, you understand there is absolutely no evidence before the court. Uh, printings and attachings to brief are, are not evidence. Evidence requires that items be submitted under oath, that there be testimony, that there be an opportunity for that uh, information to be challenged by the other side. Simply printing stuff from the internet and attaching it to a, a brief is not evidence. Do you understand that? Okay, sure. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Um, and so while uh, there were, I think one of the, uh, the petition or one of the motions was 88 pages, most of it was materials printed from the internet, which are not verified, certified, or in any way under oath, and therefore cannot be considered by the court as evidence in this case. You understand? Okay, I do now. I'm sorry. I apologize. That's okay. One of the things I wanted to ask you is I've read the original petition, which this whole case is generated from for mandamus, and I'm trying to figure out succinctly uh, the particular challenge you've got. Let me ask you, if I might, um, it appears that the main challenge, as I've gleaned from your petition for mandamus, is that you were asserting the machines used by the county clerk may have the ability to be uh, connected to the internet. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. All right. And... Um, I believe these are machines that you acknowledge have been qualified or certified by the Kansas Secretary of State to be used in elections, correct? That is also correct, yes. Right. Um, and when I looked at your petition, page, they're not numbered, but the fifth page, the bottom paragraph number four on that page says, uh, to the effect um it requires a thorough inspection from someone capable of identifying those hardware components as some can be as tiny as the tip of a pencil. Um, and you're talking about needing these machines to be examined to determine whether in fact they can be connected to the internet, correct? Correct. So you don't have any evidence that these machines can in fact be connected to the internet. Your Honor, I would... I would draw your attention to the word capable. Um, they do have the capability of that. That was put forth with the actual Dominion patent. That was my intention. And I, I understand that the court may not view that as evidence, but it is, it isn't just anything I've drawn up. Um, the capabilities that are in computers today, it's very hard to even find any computer that you don't just plug in and is capable of some kind of cellular, you know, any of the things listed in our statutes. And so as, as much as I have tried to verify, you know, I'm being withheld from that, even to the extent that the Secretary of State's office is deleting those certifications or examinations if they even occurred. So at this point, I don't really know how it can can be determined if that is an assumption. You know, I mean, I can only give what is factual and that they are built to network, in fact. Well, that, uh, as you point out, and you use that very word, best we can do is speculate. Right. And so that's the point to that would be is that there is no evidence from the state stance as far as the secretary of state would be concerned either. So I don't know how we get that when we're denied that as people, you know, who are trying to find may, out. Okay. Okay. And you may have a very good point there, but you see, that's not what a court of law or an action for mandamus is for an action for mandamus. Uh, and the court of law is not an investigatory body. That would be something you would address with the legislature uh, or with the executive branch, which would be the secretary of state, not through a court of law. 
Mandamus is a very specific action um, which mandates that an elected official do something. This is an action, as I've read it, and you've summarized uh, or agreed with my summary, where you're saying, I want somebody to investigate these machines. That's not what you do in a mandamus action. Yeah, Your Honor, and I understand that. And I have done my very due diligence in, in doing that myself. Having expert attachments, even though the court doesn't view them as testimony, these are very specific documents that are provided by the federal EAC of the components. The components are there. You can go look up these computer documents. And even though I don't have something in an evidentiary standing with the court at this time, they are factual. And I would be more than glad to have the opportunity to bring it as evidence, Your Honor, because it, it would be under perjury. Correct. And that's the best evidence you can have is evidence under oath because perjury applies, and uh, we don't have that here. Uh, you you mentioned uh, also in your petition, um, citing you know appropriate law in support of your position. That would be paragraph three point five. Petitioner cites relevant case law, and you cite the uh, Schneider versus City of Kansas City case. Um, you would have to admit that the defense has cited a number of cases that have been brought around the country. In fact, one that you were involved in in federal court, um, which deal with the issues of standing and some of the other things um, that are relevant to this case uh, that you have not answered in a reply brief. Uh, the O'Rourke versus Dominion Voting Systems, a 10th Circuit case, uh, dealing with almost identically what you've brought here, where the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals, that's one step below the United States Supreme Court, found that the individuals had no standing to assert claims similar to those that you have brought in this action. Um, another name that's quite familiar uh, is the, uh, in the case of Lake versus Hobbs, which is an Arizona case. Kerry Lake, who's now, who lost a, an election for governor, challenged the election, made all sorts of allegations, was unsuccessful through a number of lawsuits, now is running for United States Senate, uh, brought almost identically the same issues you did. And the courts in Arizona found that she had no standing. She was asserting a general right and not one that the courts are in a position to interfere in. Um, so knowing that you cited relevant case law, all of the relevant case law cited by the defense that you did not reply to, it's all contrary to your position. Your Honor, I feel like being a candidate on the ballot is a, enough vested interest. I guess I wouldn't understand the position of I'm, not I'm sure, having I hate, to, I hate to interrupt, but I'm sure Ms. Lake would agree with you as well. Um, she was sure. a ballot for, on the ballot for governor and she lost. Now, she, of course, she's on for the Senate. Uh, but she was a and, and that court found she didn't have standing. I'm so, your honor. I'm I guess I don't understand the the filings of Miss Lake directly um, as a pro se litigant. You know, those are things that I don't have afforded to me. I don't have the money to have lawyers. I just know what's right and wrong by the Constitution. Our state constitution says that our laws are to be followed directly under the elections procedure and that is not taking place so that's why i wrote my writ good well um and finally um while not identical no no two lawsuits are identical but similar was a case that you participated in as a party roberts versus caskey on federal district court 22 cv 2366 what did the judge rule there the judge, we were not in proper jurisdiction, Your Honor. Okay. Um, you again, know, it's a pending issue. Yes. And so, and that's just kind of the thing. I don't, as a citizen of the United States and not having legal support, you know, we do our best. And I have certainly done my best to be due diligent to honor the court and the laws of this country. So, I mean, I don't really find that those particular cases are relevant to this matter. That's why I didn't respond to those. Um, they're very different. This is directly related to my candidacy in my own county and the statutes that are written by our legislature. 
All right. Well, um, knowing that I've read the briefs and the law um, as uh, prescribed, is there anything more that you wish to add? I'm going to ask Mr. Holder to weigh in if there's anything he wants to uh, uh, supplement uh, as part of his argument. Anything more that you want to add at this time? I just pray the court doesn't dismiss this case, Your Honor. I think it's imperative we stand by our state constitution. Okay. Mr. Holder, anything additional you wish to add regarding um, your positions uh, with either the petition for writ of mandamus or the motions that the plaintiff filed for emergency injunctions? Your Honor, at this point, and um, particularly given the argument, I think that the uh, the court has the the briefs and has read them. I don't have anything to add that hasn't already been briefed, so I'd stand on my brief, Your Honor. Okay. Well, the court's going to adopt the legal analysis as provided by the defendant and find that the plaintiff in this case has no standing um, regarding the writ for mandamus. In addition, uh, the court's going to find that um, the uh, statutes are not in violation. The machines that are being challenged have been uh, qualified by the chief election officer for the state of Kansas, who is the secretary of state, that they're being conducted properly, that they're not in violation of either the Kansas constitution or the statutes as referenced. So not only on the standing issue, but should the standing be found by an appellate court, if this goes up on appeal, uh, that she did have standing courts going to find that there is no injury, that there's no proof of any injury, that there's no evidence that the court could rely upon to allow this case to go forward. Uh, and so on all of those, the court will adopt uh, the legal authority cited by defense in support of its decision to dismiss the petition of writ of mandamus and to deny any request for any emergency or temporary relief. Uh, Mr. Holder, if you'll prepare an appropriate journal entry. Ms. Levitt, uh, I am required to advise you that as a result of the court's decision, you do have the right to appeal. Uh, the court cannot appoint you a lawyer nor assist you in any way in perfecting that appeal, but you must file that on your own if you wish to appeal the decision of the court. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Holder, anything else? Your Honor, um, just so that there's an abundance of clarity on the issue, um, uh, given that Ms. Levitt is not represented. Uh, the court has asked me to prepare a journal entry memorializing the court's ruling today, uh, which I am then required to provide a draft copy of to Ms. Levitt so that she can review and make sure. I just want to make sure that we get clear with your honor that the point of providing that is not to debate whether Ms. Levitt agrees with the ruling or not. It's simply to memorialize that I've accurately recounted what your honor has ruled. My that's that's a good that. point. And with Ms. Levitt not being represented by counsel, Ms. Levitt, Mr. Holder is going to prepare a journal entry basically that outlines to the extent he can uh, the ruling that I made. You may not agree with the ruling, but all he is trying to do is memorialize in a written instrument what I ruled. And um, he's going to send you a copy of that. You may say, I disagree with the judge. I don't think he's right. But that's not the, the form. That's what you do on appeal. Uh, when you get a copy of that, are you, I think what you'll do is submit this Rule 170, Mr. Holder. Um, yeah. You'll have, after you receive it, you got 10 days to file a written objection that he did not in, uh, encapsulate correctly in the document what I ruled today, not that you agree with the ruling. Do you understand the difference? Okay. Do you have any, I mean, so in other words, don't file a written objection saying, I disagree with the judge. Your objection would have to be that Mr. Holder didn't, uh, memorialize what I ruled correctly. That that would be the substance of an objection. Do you understand? Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay. A lot of pro se litigants think that they're supposed to object um, because they disagree with the judge, and it's not. You're supposed to object if you think Mr. Holder got what I ruled incorrectly. And what I ruled is you don't have standing, but that even if a court on appeal would find that you did have standing, that there is no injury or justiciable controversy that the court can rule upon based on the petition for writ of mandamus. And so he'll set that out in the in the ruling. Okay. You may have a uh, a forum for your objection, but it is not in a writ of action uh, for mandamus. Uh, your forum would be preferably at the legislative level or again with the executive branch 
um, and at this point in time, not uh, based on the mandamus petition that was filed. All right. With that, anything further for the record today? No, Your Honor. Mr. Holder? For the defendant, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. And we will be adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. While looking for the case file for this case, the one that's actually in Kansas right now, I stumbled across this little piece of information, which I thought I'd share with you because it has absolutely nothing to do with the case we just heard. But, you know, sometimes when you kick the hornet's nest, you stir people up and they can see things they would ordinarily not see. Yeah especially in small towns. Ouch. I don't think a commis commission woman should be doing things like this. Just saying. See y'all next time.